Hello students, Mr. Madison here with my second attempt at a instructional video. Uh, we are still uh, in our uh, study, involved with our study of finding the area of different kinds of quadrilaterals. And this particular instructional video will focus on finding the area of a trapezoid. Um, just by way of review, however, we have um, we have uh, worked with finding the area of um, parallelograms. So we've done this. We found the area of parallelograms. And when you're finding the area of a parallelogram, you might be finding the area of a square. Or you might be finding the area of a rectangle. Or you might be finding the area of a parallelogram that's not a square or a rectangle, something that has, say, a little lean to it. And the formula that we use for finding the area of any kind of parallelogram is just simply base times height. Now, when you have a square, the sides are the same. So this becomes this. So you can think of these as two different formula, but in reality, it's just multiplying the two dimensions together. Sometimes um, for a rectangle, instead of calling one dimension the base and the other dimension the height. Sometimes we call it length and width. So the formula base times height for a rectangle could just as easily be expressed as length times width. Now when you get to a parallelogram that does not, that does not have these right angles in the corner, then you have to be careful because the side is no longer the height. This is the height. The height is always the perpendicular distance between the two, two parallel sides here. So this would be the base and you'd use the formula area equals base times height. Once you ascertain the values of B and H, you're good to go. You're just going to multiply those two values together. Uh, we also um, talked about finding the area of rhombuses and kites. Now, a rhombus, this would be an example of a rhombus, A rhombus is a parallelogram. A rhombus is a parallelogram. So you can use this formula if you want to find the area of a rhombus. But we have a secondary formula that we use for a rhombus. We also use that very same formula for a kite. Recall students that, oops, you know what I'll do? I'll color this in. <laughs> then you can't see my boo-boo. Um, recall that a rhombus is a special kind of parallelogram. All four sides are the same. 
But also one of the features of a rhombus is that when you draw in the diagonals, they are perpendicular to each other. Same story here. The diagonals of a kite are perpendicular to each other. And this is, this is the area formula that we used when we were finding the area of a rhombus and a kite. We said the area is going to equal one half times the length of one diagonal times the length of the other diagonal. So D sub 1 and D sub 2 refer to the lengths of the two diagonals. And we learned that all we had to do was ascertain those values. You know, how far is it from here to here? How far is it from here to here? Multiply those together and take half, and we were home. And that gave us, that gave us our area. Same story with the rhombus. This length from this point to the diagonal corner multiplied by this length from this point to this point and then take half and that'll give you that'll give you the area. Our goal today is to be able to find this is our goal. We want to be able to find the area of a trapezoid. So by the time I'm done with this, this instructional uh, video, the goal is that everybody will be able to find the area of a trapezoid. Recall students that a trapezoid is unique because a trapezoid is not, is not a parallelogram. By definition, a trapezoid has only two sides that are parallel to each other. Only two sides. The sides that are parallel, and you know, remember the symbol we use on the diagram to designate that lines are parallel? We put these arrows. So these two sides are the parallel sides, and those sides are called bases. The other two sides that are not parallel are called legs. Typically, this is how most trapezoids are situated. This is what they look like, um, but they don't have to. If you have this, This is still a trapezoid, but remember, the bases, it's important for you to understand, the bases are the sides that are parallel. This would be a base, and this would be a base. Even though we've taken this guy and just kind of turned it 90 degrees, understand the bases are the parallel sides. Important for you to know that. I wouldn't be emphasizing uh, emphasizing that if it wasn't important. So our goal is to find the area of a trapezoid. You know what we need to do that? We need a formula. So here's our formula right now. The area of a trapezoid is found by multiplying one half times the height times the sum of the bases. So this part that I'm about to write right now refers to the sum of of the bases in parentheses, B sub one plus B sub two. This is our primary tool that we're gonna use over and over and over again. And just generally, when you're given a problem, you're gonna have to figure out what H is, what B sub one is, and what B sub two is. Those values probably are not gonna all be given to you um, what fun would that be if I just gave you those three numbers and asked you to plug them in, go to your calculator and get your answer? So the, the, um, the challenge for a lot of the problems that you're going to be doing is simply to come up with these values, H, B sub 1, and B sub 2, plug into your formula and get your answer. Let's do, um, let's do some examples, all right? And we'll start with a very, very, very simple example. Here's, here's a trapezoid.
And here's the given information. I'm going to tell you that the top of this thing is 12. I'm going to tell you that the bottom of this thing is 28. So you, you know B sub 1, and you know B sub 2. Those two pieces of information have generously been supplied to you. H, H is the height. The height is the perpendicular distance between the two bases. So I'm going to draw in an altitude here. Perpendicular. This has to be perpendicular. It's also perpendicular up here. So the perpendicular distance between the two bases is your height. This is your height. And I'm going to tell you that the height of this thing is 16. And the question is, what's the area? That's the question. Well, we got a formula. Area equals one half times the height times the sum of the bases, B sub one plus B sub two. This problem is probably the easiest trapezoid area problem you'll ever get because you are given all three of the values you need for your formula. So when you just take those values and put them in, you're going to have one half times 16. And then in parentheses, you're going to have 12 plus 28. Now let's talk about how you're going to get your final answer here. If you want, you can pick up your calculator right now and enter this that you see right here, you can enter that into your calculator. Uh, use the parentheses. Just as you see it, you could enter it in and then get your answer. I'm going to do just a little arithmetic here. Half of 16 is 8. And then 12 plus 28 is 40. So what it just boils down to is 8 times 40. And the answer is going to be 320. Now, I didn't put any units here. Uh, but if I did go back and I made this inches, 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 then our answer would be square inches. So in this very first example here, you were given, you were given all three values that you need to find the area. That will not always be the case. In fact, that'll probably rarely be the case. Let's do some more examples. Now, this next example is just so that you remember how to apply the formula. Look, here's a trapezoid. And I'm just drawing it differently. Let's suppose I tell you this is 13, and this is 25, and this is the height, and it has a value of 20. And I'm asked to find the area. So here we go. Area equals one half times the height times the sum of the bases, B sub 1 plus B sub 2. This is H. I'm going to call this B sub 1. doesn't matter which one's B sub 1 and which one's B sub 2. I'm going to call this B sub 2. I'm going to take those three numbers, I'm going to plug them into the formula, and I'd have 1 half times the height, which is 20, times the sum of the bases, which would be 13 plus 25. Once again, don't let the calculation part um, be the part that causes you to get the answer wrong. If you want, you could go to your calculator right now. I'm going to do a little arithmetic. Half of 20 is 10. And then 13 plus uh, 25 is, uh, let's see, 38. And I can finish that out in my head. 10 times 38 is 380. And I didn't put units, but whatever the units would be here, They'd be squared, square units for my answer. All right. Let's do another example. 
This example was like the last one. What was the difference between them? I just took the trapezoid and turned it because I want everybody to remember the bases, these two guys right here, have to be parallel. That's how you recognize what the bases are. They're parallel to each other. Uh, let's, do, let's do this problem here. I'm going to draw a trapezoid. And I'm going to point something out to you about this trapezoid. Right after I draw it here. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. I'm going to put a little right angle in this corner. And I'm going to put a little right angle in this corner. Now, this is a trapezoid. The top and the bottom are parallel. And this would be the, this would be this would be uh, uh, the top base up here, b sub one, and this would be b sub two. But notice that this side of the trapezoid is perpendicular to both the top base and the bottom base. And just very simply, what that means is that this side here is actually the height. And that's not always the case. It would only be the case if it's perpendicular. So this is a side of the trapezoid, but it's also the height of the trapezoid. Uh, and I'm going to tell you here that the top base is 9. Then I'm going to give you the length of this slanted side over here. I'm going to tell you that the length of the slanted side is 10 square roots of 2. And then I'm going to give you one more critical piece of information. I'm going to tell you that this angle right here is 45 degrees. Now that should that should make you all very very happy. And the reason that that should make you all very very happy is because you folks are experts at working with uh, a special right triangle, a 45 45 90 triangle. And look what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw in this altitude right here. Now of course, if that's 90 and that's 45, then this has to be 45 here. Now, this is my formula for the area. Area equals one-half times the height times the sum of the bases. Now, here's the deal. I have B sub 1. But I do not have the height nor do I have a value for B sub 2. And I mentioned to you earlier that the challenge in these problems is going to be determining what the values for th these three variables are so that you have them to plug into your formula. This is the right triangle that we're going to use to find these missing values. Recall that in a 45-45-90 triangle, Whatever the leg is, this would be the leg here and here. They're equal. Whatever the leg is, if you multiply by the square root of 2, you get the hypotenuse. So that means that this leg has to be 10. Think about that. If you take 10 square roots of 2 and you divide by the square root of 2, you'd get 10. This leg right here would also be 10. So this part of your trapezoid is nothing more than a 45-45-90 triangle that has a hypotenuse of 10 square roots of 2 and legs with lengths of 10 and 10. Now, you see this 10 here? This 10 is your height. Now you have two values. The only value you don't have is the bottom base. Now, the bottom base goes from this corner to this corner. You have part of it. You have this part. From here to here is 10. So here's what I'm going to do. You see this 9? That's the top base. This 9 transfers down, so to speak. So this value 9 at the top is going to transfer down to the bottom. So this distance here would be 9. Together, the 9 and the 19 give you the entire distance all the way across. 
So B sub 2 is going to be 19. Let's rerun this. We started out by drawing this altitude to form a 45, 45, 90. We knew that the hypotenuse is 10 square roots of 2. That means the leg, which is the height, is 10. And this leg from here to here is 10. Then we transferred the 9 down, added it to the 10 to get the bottom base, which is 19. I'm ready to go now. I got all the values I need. Area equals 1 half times the height, which is 10, times the sum of the bases. Top base is 9. Bottom base is 19. Again, you want to go to your calculator right now, have at it, but half a, half, half a 10 is about 5, I think. And then 9 and 19 is 28. And 5 times 28 is 140. So it'd be 140 square units for the area of this trapezoid. All right, let's do another example. Um, let's stick with this 45-45-90 uh, theme for a while. Once again, I'm going to put right angles in the corner here. So you know that this side is also the height. I'm going to put 45 degrees in the corner here. Let's see, on this triangle, I'm gonna tell you that the top is 12. I'm gonna tell you that this side over here is also 12, all right? And I'm gonna ask you to find the area. So let's think about this. We have the top base. We're good to go there. We have the height. We're good to go there. But we gotta figure out how far it is from here to here. So the first step you're going to take in almost all these problems is you're going to draw an altitude to form a 45, 45, 90 here. Now this 12, this 12 right here sort of transfers over. So I know that this side of this 45, 45, 90 is 12, which means that this distance here, which is the other leg of the triangle, is also 12, which means that this 12 right here is going to transfer down, and this distance is 12. So the total distance from corner to corner would be 12 plus 12, which would be 24. That's B sub 2. So... I'm ready to go. Area equals one half times the height times the sum of the bases, B sub one plus B sub two. So I'd have one half. My height is 12. The top base is 12. The bottom base is 24. This is probably going to end up being a calculator problem, but Half of 12 is 6, and 12 and 24 is 36. I can do that. That'd be 216 square units. Let's do another one. I'm going to stick with using a 45-45-90 uh, triangle. So this is going to be 45 in the corner again. Right angle here, right angle here. That tells you that this side is also the height. And I'm going to tell you that the bottom base is 80. So from corner to corner is 80. I'm going to tell you that this slanted side is, oh, let's say 35 square roots of 2. 
All right. Now, here's what we know. We know the bottom base. Not enough to find the area. So we got to find the height and we got to find the top base. So the first thing you're going to do is drop an altitude down to form a 45, 45, 90 triangle. This 45, 45, 90 has a hypotenuse with a length of 35 square roots of two. If I divide by the square root of two, that means that each leg is going to be 35. So I have my height now. This is my height here. I've got my bottom base here. What I don't have is my top base. Now this is a little tricky. We're gonna do a little subtraction problem. We haven't done this in any of the prior examples. Look, here's the deal. We know from this corner to this corner is 80, but from here to here is 35. And I'm interested in how far it is from here to here. So it's a subtraction. 80 minus 35 is 45. Then that 45 transfers up to be my top base because this distance from here to here is the same as from here to here. So that's my top base. All right, I got everything in place now. The area equals one half times the height, times the sum of the bases, B sub one plus B sub two. I figured that the height is 35. I figured that the top base is 45 and the bottom base was given to me to start with, it's 80. So I'd have one half times 35 times 125, and this is this is definitely a, a calculator problem. Let me grab my calculator. So, um, you know, when I go to my calculator, instead of putting one half, I'm just gonna do 0.5 for a half, and then times 35, and then times 125, and I'm coming up with kind of a big number, no big deal for us, 2,187.5, and it would be units, whatever the units are, squared. And that's your answer there. All right, let's do some more. Um, I'm going to change it up a little bit. And I know that uh, you're just going to be real excited at this problem because, again, you're going to have to um, you're going to have to use something that you are really, really, really good at. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put 30 degrees in the corner here. I'm going to tell you that this is 90 and this is 90, so this is be the height over here. I'm going to tell you that. Um, the top base is seven. And I'm going to tell you that this slanted side over here is, oh, let's see. Uh, let's say 36. That's the slanted side. So what do we know? We know the top base. We know B sub one. We're good to go there. But we do not know the height, nor do we know the bottom base. So, I'm going to draw in my altitude, which forms a 30, 60, 90 triangle that has a hypotenuse of 36. Now, this side here, across from the 30, would be the short leg. The short leg is always the hypotenuse divided by 2. So, this side of this 30, 60, 90 triangle would have to be 18. That's my height. I'm good to go there. Now, this distance here from this point to the corner is the long leg of that 30, 60, 90. And recall, the long leg is always the short leg 
times the square root of three. So 18 is a short leg, which makes the long leg 18 times the square root of three. You see this seven up here? This seven is this distance that I'm kind of gesturing to with my pen here. That transfers down and this becomes seven here. So the bottom base from corner to corner is gonna be that seven added to that 18 square roots of three. That's your bottom base there. So this value goes in for B sub two. This value goes in for H and the seven goes in for B sub one. So we're ready to go. Area equals one half times the height, which is 18, times the sum of the bases. Now, the top base is 7. That's B sub 1. Plus the bottom base is 7 plus 18 square roots of 3. This 7 is the top base, and the 7 and the 18 square roots of 3 added together is the bottom base. Now, one thing you can do here so to make sure you don't make an error, is just put this into your calculator, just like that. If you want to make one little adjustment, you could put 0.5 instead of a half. So what I'm keying in right now is 0.5 times 18, then I'm going to open a parenthesis, and I'm going to do 7 plus 7 plus 18 times the square root of 3. Now, I have to do my little right arrow on my calculator. You might ha not have to, but on my calculator, when I open up that square root sign, I got an arrow over to get out from under it. I'm going to close with the parenthesis and hit enter. And what you should be coming up with here is a value of 406.59 square units. How about that, huh? little 30, 60, 90 action, and I'm sure that uh, you're excited about that. Let's do, um, let's do a couple more. Let me give you a trapezoid here. And I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna draw this slanted side in, and here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a 60 in the corner no big deal, right? This side, once again, would serve as our altitude or our height because we have right angles in the corners. And I'm going to tell you on this one that um, this side has a length of 10 square roots of 3. And I'm going to tell you that the entire base along the bottom is 28. That's all I'm going to tell you. And now we need to find, find the area. So we have the height. We're good to go on the height. We got that. That's the height. And we have the bottom base. We're good to go there. But what we got to do is figure out this top base. So what do you do? You start by drawing in an altitude to form a right triangle. If that's 60... And that's 90. This guy up here got to be 30. Now, this 10 radical 3 is going to transfer over here. Which means that this side, which is across from the 60, which is the long leg, has a length of 10 square roots of 3. This distance here across from the 30 is the short leg. Recall that in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, whatever the short leg is, if you multiply it by radical three, you have to get the long leg. Well, it stands the reason that if the long leg is 10 square roots of three, the short leg would have to be 10. Now, I want you to think about this. This distance from corner to corner is 28. This distance from here to here is 10. I see this as a subtraction problem. 
this distance here would be 28 minus that 10, which would be 18. Now that 18 transfers up to become the length of the top base. I now have all three values I need. Area equals one half times the height. So the height is going to be 10 square roots of three times the sum of the bases. Top base is 18. Bottom base was given as 28. So this is going to be half of 10 radical 3 would be 5 radical 3. And then 18 and uh, 28 is 46. So when I go to my calculator, I'm going to do um, 5 times uh, 46 times the square root of 3. Enter. I'm coming up with 398.37 square units for my answer here. Let's do another one. Couple more. All right, now look at this triangle. I'm sorry, look at this trapezoid. Watch what I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to put right angles here. So you know that's the height. And in this corner, I'm going to put 55 degrees. Let's talk about that. That's 55 degrees. That's not 30 degrees. That's not 60 degrees. That's not 45 degrees. You know what that means? That means this right triangle that we're going to have over here is not going to be one of our special right triangles. And what that indicates to you, as soon as you see that that's not a 30 and that's not a 45 and that's not a 60, that means you're gonna have to use a little bit of trigonometry. What could be more exciting than that? So look, I'm gonna tell you that the top base here is 20 and I'm gonna tell you that this slanted side has a length of 31. And I'm gonna ask you to find the area. Area is one half times the height times the sum of the bases, b sub 1 plus b sub 2. What do we know? The only thing we know right now is the height. I'm sorry, is the top base. That's the only thing we know, is the top base. So the challenge is figuring out the height and the other base, and we'll be good to go. So let's call this the height right here, because that's what it is. And I'm looking at this right triangle. This this side, H, is opposite, opposite my angle. And this side, 31, is my hypotenuse. Here's what I know. I know that the sine of 55 degrees is going to have to equal the opposite side, H, over the hypotenuse, which is 31. If I multiply both sides by 31, I'd have 31 times the sine of 55 degrees is equal to H. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to go ahead and find that value, and I'm going to round to the nearest hundredth. So I'm going 31. By the way, if you're doing this on your calculator along with me, be certain that you're in degree mode. So I'm going to go 31 times the sine of 55 degrees and I'm coming up with 25.39. That's my value for H. I'm going to write it on my diagram. 25.39 is H. Okay, I got the top base. That was given. I got the height. I've used a little sign relationship to figure out the height. I got to get the bottom base here. Well, you know what? Um... 
I might have to use a little more trigonometry. So here's the deal. Uh, let's suppose that uh, I call this side of my triangle right here, just to call it something. Would it be okay if I called it X? Now this side X is adjacent to my angle. And that's the hypotenuse. So here's what I know. When I'm looking at this right triangle that has this 55 degree angle in the corner, I know that the cosine of 55 degrees equals the adjacent side, which is X, over the hypotenuse, which is 31. If I multiply both sides of this equation I'd, by 31, I'd have 31 times the cosine of 55 degrees is equal to X. Going to go to the calculator, get my answer, round it to the nearest hundredth. So I'm going 31 cosine 55, coming up with 17.78. And I'm going to write that on my diagram. This is 17.78 from this point to this point. Now, this 20 from this corner to this corner transfers down. So this distance here is 20. So my bottom base from corner to corner is going to be 20 plus 17.78. So I'm kind of running out of room. So I'm just going to do that. 20 plus 17.78 would be 37.78. That's B sub 2. All right, I've collected all the values I need. I'm ready to go. Area equals 1 half times the height, which is 25.39 times the sum of the bases. B sub 1 was given. It's a nice, friendly whole number, 20, plus the bottom base. And once again, the bottom base is the sum of the 20 and the 17.78. The 17.78 was the value we got by using a little cosine relationship. But when I add that to 20, I'm going to get the entire length of the bottom of this trapezoid, which is 37.78. Folks, I'm going to pick up my calculator, and I'm going to just do this all at one time. I'm going to use 0.5 for half. So I'm going 0.5 times 25.39. Then I'm going to open parentheses, and I'm going to do 20 plus 37.78. Close the parentheses, enter, and I'm coming up with an area of 733 Point five two square units for my answer here. All right. Now that was an involved problem. We had to make a little sine relationship to find the height. We had to do a little cosine relationship to find the length of this side. And then we added it to the 20 to get the entire bottom base. So it's a little involved. Had a couple different steps to it, but you guys can do that. I'm sure that you can do that. Let's do another one. Um, here's a trapezoid. And I'm going to put a 48 degree angle in the corner here. Now that tells you right away, as soon as you see that's not 30 or 45 or 60, you know you're going to use a little trigonometry here. I'm going to tell you that the top base is 16. I'm going to tell you that the entire length along the bottom is 36. So here's my formula. Area equals 1 half times the height times the sum of the bases, B sub 1 plus B sub 2. I'm giving you B sub 1. I'm giving you B sub 2. But we don't know H. So that's what we got to do. So here we go. I'm going to drop, I'm going to drop an altitude down. Here. And I'm going to have to try to find H. Now, this is a little tricky, but you can do this. Watch. This is 36 here. 
where I'm gesturing, all the way across the bottom. This 16 transfers down. So from here to here, this distance is 16. And the distance all the way across is 36. This, this distance here then would have to be 36 minus that 16 or 20. So how did I get to 20? Once again, I subtracted the 16 from the 36 to get to 20. And I'm interested in finding H. This H, this H is opposite my 48 degree angle. This 20 is adjacent to my 48 degree angle. So to find H, I'm gonna have to use tangent because tangent is opposite over adjacent. So I'm going to say the tangent of 48 degrees is equal to the opposite side H over the adjacent side, which is 20. And if I multiply both sides of this equation by 20, I'd have 20 times the tangent of 48 degrees is equal to H. I'm going to find that value on my calculator. 20 times the tangent of 48 degrees, I'm coming up with 22.21 as a value for H. So that would be 22.21. So I've got every value I need. 36 is the bottom base. 16 is the top base. Those two values were given. And then it turned out my altitude or my height is 22.21. So I'm going to have area equals one half times the height, 22.21, times the sum of the bases. Top base is 16, plus the bottom base is 36. And I'm just going to do all this in my calculator just as I see it. I'm going to enter it in, except I'm going to go 0.5 times 22.21, parentheses, 16 plus 36, close the parentheses, hit enter, and I'm coming up with an area of 577.46 square units. Right. Students, I think that you can stand me doing one more example for you. One more example for you. Here we go. And we'll call it quits. Here's my trapezoid. Right angle, right angle. That makes us the height on this side. I'm going to tell you that the top of this thing is 20. I'm going to tell you that this side, which is actually the height, is 25. And I'm going to tell you that this slanted side is 65. I am not going to put anything right there. Notice, that space right there is empty. I did not give you that angle. Hmm, what does that mean? I'm going to tell you what that means. That means that this is probably going to be a Pythagorean theorem problem. So look, when I drop my altitude here, and I transfer this 25 over, I have a right triangle in which I know the hypotenuse and I know one of the legs, but I do not know this leg. So I'm gonna use that little shortcut, that little calculation shortcut we use uh, when we're applying the A squared plus B squared equals C squared relationship. And I'm gonna say that this side here has to be the square root of 65 squared minus 25 squared. And I think that's going to turn out to be 60. So this distance from here to here is 60. This distance from here to here is what I would get if I transfer that 20 down. So that means the entire bottom base would be 20 plus 60. All the way across the bottom here 
is 20 plus 60 would be 80. So 20 would be B sub 1. 80 would be B sub 2. And my height is 25. How did I get? How did I get the um, distance from here to here? I used Pythagorean theorem is what I did. So area then is found by multiplying one half times the height times the sum of the bases, B sub one plus B sub two. So I'd have one half times 25 times the top base, which is 20, plus the bottom base, which is 80. Maybe what we'll do is a little mental math here. So this would be one half times 25 times 100. So 25 times 100 is 2,500, and half of 2,500 would be 1,250 square units. All right. Can you stand for me to um, just run through these real quick? In this instruction, I started off by doing a quick review. And what we reviewed was how to find the area of different types of parallelograms. For a square, a rectangle, and any type of parallelogram, your formula is base times height. For a rhombus and a kite, you have an alternate formula that you can use if you can ascertain the lengths of the two diagonals. So you just multiply your two diagonals together and take half if you're dealing with a rhombus or a kite. To find the area of a trapezoid, this is your primary tool. The area would be one half the height times the sum of the bases. And in almost all the problems that you will do, you're going to have to use some prior skill, some prior knowledge to figure out the height or one of the bases before you can plug in and apply the formula. What knowledge or skill um, am I referring to? Well, in in this problem here, and in this one, and in this one, we, we were dealing with a 45-45-90 triangle. So you need to know the relationship between the sides uh, in that type of a triangle. Just, just remember, the legs are always weak, equal, and then the hypotenuse is always the leg times the square root of 2. All of these problems are going to start with you doing this. I'm going to gesture so, I, so you know what I'm referring to. You're going to draw in that altitude. 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 And when you draw in that altitude, what you're doing is you're forming a right triangle. And then once you have that right triangle, you can apply all your knowledge that applies to right triangles. In this case... You have a 45, 45, 90. Over here, we have a 30, 60, 90. Over here, we have a 30, 60, 90. Recall that in the 30, 60, 90, the short leg always across from the 30, the long leg always across from the 60, and it's always going to have a length that is equal to the short leg times the square root of 3, and the hypotenuse would always be the short leg doubled. Eighteen times two is thirty-six. Thirty-six divided by two is eighteen. Eighteen times the square root of three is eighteen. Radical three. So you know that relationship. You've done that many, many times. And then, if the angle in the corner is something other than a thirty, or a forty-five, or a sixty, that's the telltale sign you're going to have to apply some sort of trig ratio. In this problem, we needed to use a sine uh, relationship to find the height. We needed to use a cosine relationship to find the length of this part of the base. Over here, we needed to use a tangent relationship, opposite over adjacent, in order to find the height. So um, in this last one, we just used the good old Pythagorean theorem, uh, something you folks are all uh, experts at. But it all starts with drawing that altitude so that you have yourself a right triangle to work with. Students, I hope this video has been helpful to you. I apologize if it's gone on longer than you uh, would have hoped. Uh, but um, you can expect some follow-up problems uh, that, that I'm going to ask you to do. And I'm going to ask you to find the area of a trapezoid. And uh, I believe that if you, um, 
if you uh, have taken the time to watch this instruction, that that's going to that it's going to be helpful to you in solving those types of problems. So thank you for listening. Um, good luck on the problems that I'm going to send you. Uh, thank you for your attention. Have a great day, everybody.